first and foremost, I'm going to talk sports personality of the year, if that's all right with you. Okay. Uh, Crown tonight, congratulations to Murray Epps, uh, classed as the uh, sports personality of the year. Now, that, do you know what? That's two um, women footballers yeah. that's done it two years in a row, right? Yeah, back to back. Yeah. Back to back. Decent. Uh, yeah, very well. Listen, at the end of the day, it's a, uh, it's a public vote. Um, what you class as a popularity contest. So if you're popular, you're going to get the votes of the people that absolutely adore you. And oh, is that gonna... how it goes, yeah? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, the, know. the nominees are voted for by, by the general public. Oh, okay. But this is, that's not the point that I want to make regarding it. What I want to make, I want to find out, because I, I, I don't know how the process works here. How do we get to the nominees? Mm. That's the question that I just want to ask. Now, once the nominees are out there, it's all forget. Crack mm. on, man. Get as many votes as you possibly can, and whoever wins that vote yeah, and, yeah. and he's crowned at the end of it, so congratulations, Murray Earps, great stuff, right? But how do we get to the six people that are nominated? So the six people, I wrote them down earlier on, that were uh, that were nominated for the award. Uh, Stuart Broad has mm -hmm. um, had a phenomenal career as a cricketer there. Frankie Dettori, from a phenomenal uh, career, of course, uh, as, a, as a jockey. Murray Earps, who we mentioned, who ended up winning it. Rory McIlroy, uh, Katarina Johnson-Thompson and Alfie Hewitt. They're, they're, they were the six nominees that the people... Uh, who vote on uh, sports personality here could vote upon, right? Now, mm. I, I immediately thought in my head, how come Jude Bellingham's not in that? Mm. Now, the reason why I think that, I'm thinking of the achievement of a, such a young footballer in Germany mm. um, in winning is it, uh, the Golden Ball for Euro Europe's young, uh, best young player mm -hmm. and the records that he's now breaking in a different country in the Liga. In one of the best teams in the world, Real Madrid. And he's smashing him in for fun. He's having a... I think Wearing the number five shirt. Mate. Zidane. I'm looking at that thinking, Jude Bellingham's had a phenomenal 2023. How can he not make the shortlist of Sports Personality of the Year? Yeah. So, so and that, then what about Leon Edwards? Well... Now you're getting me. Now because you're getting, I know that this now is you're getting like, my juices going. This is, this is what you like. Now you're getting my juices going. Leon Edwards, right? unbelievable. Well, the reason why I said Jude Bellingham first is because football, the most popular game on the planet, the yeah. most people listening to this right now would probably be able to understand yeah. Jude Bellingham's had a wonderful, wonderful year. Yeah. Why is he not in the best six to be voted for? He might not win it. Yeah. Other people might win the vote. That's sound. Yeah. But why is he not in the six that you get to vote for? Has she won anything this year, Mary Ups? Uh, like apart from uh, the Man United done anything because England uh, I don't know yeah. listen, she, listen no, they she won the vote it's yeah. cool the, and then you just brought up my man right Leon yeah. Edwards now let's just put this into perspective Leon Edwards MMA fighter now when you when you talk about sports personality of the year there's got to be a lot more to the just for me what you do in your sporting field sports personality that's what we're kind of trying yeah, to yeah. thrive on right Okay. we're talking about a young guy that has been through the toughest of times in life. Mm. And now in a niche sport where it is incredibly difficult to be the premier, to be the number one. It's not like boxing where there's a million belts in each weight division. We're mm. talking one weight, one belt, championship belt, top of the tree in the weight division of the best fighters on the planet. Now, just to put this into perspective, before Leon Edwards, only one man in history from Great Britain has been a UFC champion across all the weight divisions. Mm. Only one has been able to do it. Leon Edwards, last year, 2022, became the champion. Mm -hmm. In 2023, he defended his crown, his championship yeah, belt, yeah, on yeah. British soil against the pound-for-pound pound number one fighter on the planet. And he beat him. And he beat him easy. Mm. He beat him easy in front of his British fans. And then last week, where I've just been in Las Vegas, he then went to Las Vegas... He took on Colby Covington, who many would were saying, "Oh, this is uh, this is where Leon Edwards is going to get found out." And he took him to school. He didn't just take him to school in his own game. He took him to school in Colby Covington's game as well, mm. becoming the first man ever from Great Britain to defend a UFC title on American soil. Nobody's ever done it before. Mm -hmm. He's gone and done it twice. In doing so, I didn't know all of this, by the way. In doing so, he has now got twelve consecutive undefeated wins at welterweight, equaling the great George St. Pierre. So great George St. Pierre's number one, he, he had that record yeah, for ages. Yeah. And now Leon Edwards has equaled it. Wow. He's equaled the record. Yeah, he should be, he sh he's, listen, with what, the way you've described this, yeah. So what does it take yeah. to get nominated? I'm not saying he's going to win it, because I get that MMA and UFC is a bit niche when we're talking about football and all these other yeah. great sports that we all cover. But what does it take for someone like Leon Edwards 
to get at least nominated. Yeah, mentioned. Put on mentioned. The, just put, mentioned. Put in the six. Put him in the six and let the people decide. Yeah. Because I tell you something, if they knew his story and they knew what he achieved and they knew who he achieved it against, yeah. they would be voting in the thousands and millions for the kid mm. because he is absolutely the real deal, mate. The real deal. That's all I want to know. So if anybody can tell me and enlighten me how we get to the six. I'll, I'll make a pledge for next year because he's probably going to do it again next year. He'll overtake the GSP record next year. Mm. And then who knows? He might even go on to become this a two-weight world champion. Uh, listen, this is not taking anything away from Mary Earps, Absolutely by the way, because the she's, six... she's a phenomenal character yeah. in the sport and doing great a great job for um, women's football. But then now we've got to look at it. Well, are we sharing, are we sharing the load here? Because it's been twice now that women's football have won the sports personality of the year yeah. in a row. Yeah, but that might be what's popular with the the people that are voting. I get that. Yeah, but it's got to be in the no, it's got to be nomin like there's got to be more um, va variations on the nominees. I agree. That's all we're trying to say. I agree. Listen, don't get me started on Tom Aspinall as well, who became heavyweight champion this year in the UFC. Listen, I'm getting oh, all no, UFC no, no, heavy. No, but no, Leon no, Edwards UFC's is someone... a bit too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. We've got we got to go. We've got to go, go to another sport. Yeah, all right. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Listen, let's have more recognition for some of them niche sports because there's some sensational athletes that are doing great things on the world level in these niche sports that absolutely should be celebrated and be given the little push when it comes to the six nominees that people get to vote for. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.